So everyone has a story, but our next guest has one that is both horrifying and heartbreaking. Gypsy Rose Blanchard went to prison after pleading guilty to second degree murder, the murder of her mother. And throughout her childhood and beyond, Gypsy's mother would tell people her daughter suffered from a string of illnesses and disorders, going so far as to do things that included making her use a wheelchair, a feeding tube, get multiple unnecessary surgeries, and take medications she didn't need. Years of physical, mental, and medical abuse led to Gypsy convincing a man she met online to kill her mother. She served seven years of her 10-year sentence. She was released last December. Gypsy tells her story. She adds details that have never been heard before in her new memoir, My Time to Stand. And Gypsy joins us this morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, you are pregnant, by the way, so congratulations, yeah, congratulations. on your pregnancy. Thank you. Thank you. You're having a little girl, you I'm said? I'm having a girl, yes. Do you have a name yet? We haven't picked out a name yet, but we have a lot of options. Um, it's interesting, right, when you are in the process of becoming a parent, mm -hmm. how you will find how that will change you as a person. Mm -hmm. And going through the experience you've gone through, mm -hmm. how do you think you're prepared to step into that role? Well, thankfully, I have a wonderful support system. Um, I have a wonderful family and friends who support me through this journey. So I have lots of feedback from them and um, just a lot of support from them. So that helps me a lot. And your story has been well documented and a lot of people have been following your journey and mm -hmm. everything that happened, but what do you want people to know and take away from this memoir? I really just want them to read this memoir, memoir and realize that it doesn't matter what you have been through in your life, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that good things still can happen for you regardless of the horrors that you may have experienced in your life because I think everyone relates to trauma in some form or fashion. Well, for about 23 years of your life or so, uh, it was basically, you could describe it as a nightmare, right? Correct. How were you able to move on or move forward? Do you think about the past? Do you think about your mother? I mean, of course. Um, I'm in extensive therapy, um, and I work through my past by going through that therapy. And it's going to be a long journey. It's nothing that I will be able to get over in one day. Um, so it's gonna be a lifelong healing process for me. You say you wanna be an influence for change. Can mm -hmm. you talk about that? What do you mean by that? And did that experience in prison highlight the fact that you want to be an influence for change? Absolutely. Um, I feel like there is a lot of positive change that could happen um, if given the ability and so um, I think that there is a lot of things in our justice system that needs to be addressed so I am an advocate for prison reform but also um, for abuse victims I feel like I was in a situation where I didn't know that there were resources to help children and you know victims of abuse in my situation and so I think that needs to be advocated more those resources um, and more knowledge and education about that yeah talk about that because you say in and out of prison your platform you're using right now mm -hmm. to really spread the message that there needs to be change and mm -hmm. there is hope as you were mentioning but talk about your time in prison mm -hmm. and the the learning aspect you went through in terms of finding what resources were available mm -hmm. and learning a lot for yourself mm -hmm. about what lies ahead of course I mean there are resources that are within the prison system um, but getting those resources are actually quite difficult and so um, I think that there needs to be um, very very specific things that are laid out um, because it is very difficult for incarcerated individuals to get the extensive uh, mental health therapy that they would require um, so there needs to be more advocacy on that um, you talked about something that you hadn't mentioned until recently, how you were actually addicted to painkillers, right? right? Uh, that was something that many people didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering, at the time that the murder of your mother happened, were you mm -hmm. under the influence of the painkillers? Were you high? Did that influence what occurred that night? Uh, you know, I was, during that week, abusing painkillers. However, that was not something that affected my mental state at that time. Interesting. Um, you know, it's it, it's fascinating to me that for so many years, um, 
you went along with this fabricated story, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I have a hard time understanding how when you would go visit doctors, because you did mm -hmm. extensively, mm -hmm. how those doctors were unable to see the truth that mm -hmm. you actually could walk, that mm -hmm. you didn't need a feeding tube, that mm -hmm. you didn't need these drugs you were given. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just baffling to me. How was someone out there not saying, wait a minute, she doesn't need any of this stuff. This is all a lie. I know. Um, the, the level of deception that my mother had over these doctors was so extensive and so severe that these doctors would ignore test results coming back normal and things like this, um, things that should have been red flags. And unfortunately, I was one of the individuals um, of many um, that fall through the cracks. So do you find those doctors in any way responsible for carrying on and allowing your mother then in a way to carry on this lie? You know, I, I kind of chalk that up to human error. I think we all want to believe the good in people. So, um, you know, I struggle with that. It is something that, yes, I do feel like they should be held accountable in ways. And other ways, I also feel like it was misjudgment on their part. What do you think? Do you think there needs to be reform in the medical health care system as well? Mm -hmm. And and what has helped you the most since being out of prison in yes. terms of helping to re rehabilitate your life? Of course, I think that there should be um, more red tape within the medical system. I think that um, it should be a requirement for doctors to take a certain course while going through medical school on Munchausen by proxy syndrome. Um, and I think that, you know, in, in general, there needs to be be more advocacy and more awareness about Munchausen by proxy syndrome. Um, and yes, I have um, an amazing support system that gets me through all, all of this. Um, I've been out of prison for 10 months, and so far that has been a very eventful 10 months. Um, so the the support system that I have has been my inspiration for continuing to push on and go beyond my means of just um, being an average person and hopefully can move on into being a voice for change. It hasn't even been a year, but once you wow. came out, uh, you became a viral sensation. <laughs> and you have a huge mm -hmm. social media following, so I think, um, you know, that's something difficult to adjust to, uh, even bit. if you didn't have everything that you've had in your life. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for coming by. Thank we you. appreciate you being here, and we do want people to know that, of course, they can pick up a copy of your memoir, My Time to Stand. will hit shelves in December, almost a full year after Gypsy was released from prison. To pre-order a copy, just use that QR code right there on your screen. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back.